want to talk to you about something I didn't know alcohol was doing for me when I was an active alcoholic, but I only knew it when I stopped drinking. And then when I looked back in early recovery and figured it all out, I said to myself, you know, Terry G, that's why early recovery was so difficult for you because of things that you thought you were doing when you drank. You know, booze is cunning, baffling, and powerful. It's also a really good liar. It really is. And my name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel where we learn to live sober one day at a time. If you could take a, take a second and hit that subscribe button and take another second and hit that like button, I'd really appreciate it. And let's get back to the video. What am I talking about? When I look back and, you know, things that I thought alcohol was doing for me, cunning, baffling, and powerful, and also a good liar. Well, it, it was simple as this. And hopefully you can identify with it because if you can and you're in early recovery you're not going crazy it's really a symptom of alcoholism or an outcome from an active life of active alcoholism that's what this is as an outcome when i drank when i lived my life as an active alcoholic i was a full-blown alcoholic when i was 18 years old and i finally quit when i was 28 or 30 around there i thought i was dealing with life on life terms. That's what I thought. If at work something stressed me out, you know, I have a few drinks, relax, yeah, I felt better. I thought at that very moment I was dealing with life. If I was angry, you know, mad, and I couldn't, you know, I thought I was gonna rage out on somebody or freak out, have a drink, calm down. I thought I was looking after business. If I wanted to ask a girl out and I was really nervous, feeling some anxiety, have a few drinks, take the edge off. I thought I was dealing with life on life terms. Somebody died, same thing, and go to a funeral, a little, few little doobies, a little drinky, and you know, I was calm, I was good to go to that funeral. Any, you know, people who I love died, and I thought I was dealing with things. And one of the, and that's one of the biggest things that alcohol did for me, it tricked me into thinking that I was dealing with my emotional life and my mental life by using alcohol. You see, I didn't really believe I was an alcoholic. I thought I was just a kid with a very troubled life. And I thought that's what everybody did when they're stressed out or they didn't feel good about themselves or they were nervous or they're anxious, they had a drink. But for myself, I was using alcohol. When I look back now, I was using alcohol as a coping mechanism in my life. For, for everything, it didn't matter. Alcohol creeped into every nook and cranny of my life at the end. So what happened is that over a number of years, 10 years or 12 years, those issues that I thought I was dealing with, the illusion of I thought I was dealing with things. So over time, you know, that hurt at the funeral, put it down, layer another layer of pain. Being rejected from a girlfriend, layer of pain. Being, being you know, screwing up in life, layer of pain, getting fired from a job, layer of pain, drink, layer of pain, just stuff it down, stuff it down, stuff it down, forget about the memories, forget about the thoughts, drink, 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 calm the mind down, deal with the emotions through alcohol or drugs. And I did that for a long, long time. Then when I sobered up, you know, like day one, it started to come back after, and I should say day one, maybe about 30 days, these emotions, these unresolved issues start to creep up, creep up, creep up, creep up, and reveal their ugly head sort of thing. So I'm walking into recovery rooms, I'm walking in sobriety on a daily basis with all these emotional problems. And I'm thinking it's a direct result of the way I'm living for that day. And really a lot of it was because I didn't deal with anything when it came to my sobriety, when it came to my life up to when I started in recovery. So having unresolved issues or having problems that I didn't resolve when I drank, I just carried them forward into my sobriety and it drove me nuts. I was emotional wreck in early recovery. I was obsessive. I had weird thoughts going on in my head because the alcohol used to slow my brain down. The emotions were all over the place. And a lot of that is wreckage of the past and the illusion that alcohol was 
helping us or giving us the ability to deal with life on life terms, but really it wasn't. It was just telling us, it was lying to us that we were dealing with things. So when we sobered up, there's no more alcohol. Reality sucks, it's right there. And we're, we're stuck with all this wreckage of the past, all these feelings that were never dealt with, all these occurrences in our mind that we think about, that we bring up, that were never dealt with because people don't deal with life like that. When we have a problem in life, people will sit down and talk about it or deal with it on a daily basis or deal with it in real time or put it off a day or so and deal with their issues. But not alcoholics. No, 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 no. We don't do that. We don't deal with our issues at all. We run from our issues. And by running from our problems, we use the alcohol to hide behind. And they never leave us. They just get stuck inside there. So if you're sobering up, and you're saying to yourself, man, oh man, life is really difficult. I feel guilty. I feel shame. I feel hurt. I feel anger. I feel uneasy. I feel like bursting out of my skin. It's normal. It's normal. Because one of the reasons is, is because everything becomes real and those unresolved issues start coming back. And payback is a B. It's a bitch. Payback is crazy in recovery. The wreckage of the past comes back in tenfold that those issues can be resolved by journaling we can identify those issues talk about those issues take it one day at a time and resolve those issues one day at a time before you know it you're dealing with your problems in real time and a lot of those problems that you had before when you came into recovery will be gone they will but in the early recovery you need to fasten your seatbelt and hold on because we didn't deal with nothing. And when we have no booze or no drugs in us, we have to start dealing with things and being responsible for our life. When I say for our life, I mean for our mental health life, for our emotional life, for our physical life, for our spiritual life. We have to be, we have to be responsible for that. And being responsible for that is saying to yourself, yeah, I'm like this. This is the reason I'm like this and I'm going to do something about it. That's what I'm going to do. But this video is not about doing something about it. This video, well, I shouldn't say that. This video is about recognizing it, that you are not going crazy. You are not, you know, having, you know, you're not on the right road to recovery. It's just that early recovery brings up a lot of past issues, a lot of past trauma, a lot of past things that we did to other people and people did to us, but we need to deal with it in therapy or through the steps or through sponsorship or helping others through the church, wherever you may be, you need to deal with it. But you know something, the crazy thing about it all, it does go away and you do get better, but recovery costs us. And one of the things it costs us that we have to go through the pain because no pain, no gain. We don't get recovery for free people. It just doesn't come to us. We have to work for it. Hopefully it's half as hard as you did for the drink, but you will get better. You will feel better, but it'll take some time. Okay. It'll take some time. And this video is my personal experience when it came to dealing with emotions and dealing with difficulties, because I never dealt with anything. If you can relate to it, that's great because awareness is what this channel is about. And being aware of the problem is half the battle. You're halfway there once you know what the difficulties are or you start to understand what the difficulties are in your life. You know, that's, that's, it's always been for me like that. Once I understood what was going on, it was easier to comprehend and take an action plan to move forward in my life. It was, it was much, much easier. It really was, okay? So my name is Terry G. This is an alcohol-free life channel. We're willing to live sober one day at a time. You can take a second. Can you please subscribe to my channel? Take another second and hit that like button, okay? Hit that like button. Happy Father's Day to everybody. I know this video is probably gonna come out on Tuesday or Wednesday, but it's Sunday today and it's Father's Day. And if you're not seeing your kids, I hope one day at a time that you will start seeing your children and all these mothers out there are maybe not seeing their children and all their fathers who are seeing their children, mothers who are seeing their children. <laughs> Have a happy Father's Day, okay? God bless. And remember, sobriety is freedom. Sobriety equals 
freedom. It really, really does. Okay, my name is Terry G. Ciao for now, and I'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye-bye. Oops.